hypothetical, your client just paid $15,000 for some new software. Part of that for the app, part of that for the onboarding. Now, if you're a good little accountant, how are you gonna book that entry? Monthly accruals already, sir. Yep, you've got Carl, who sets it up in Excel and posts an entry every month. Carl, get a look at this. I'm gonna add, for the period ended January to December 2024, I'm gonna put that in both lines of the description. Look at this, on the PL, just posted all 12 months. <laughs> okay, what is this sorcery? It's a tool called Accruer, and they are this video sponsor. That's right, we're doing a demo day. Now that was an expense. It also works across descriptions and bills, checks, journal entries, stuff in the bank feed. All you gotta do, hit an expense account and use that for the period start date to end date vernacular. Just like we saw in that software example, we're hitting an expense account and we're using that phrasing in the description. Back to the PL, I'm gonna show you what's happening under the hood here. If I look at the contract labor account, you'll see that original 3,000 for onboarding, and it reversed that 3,000, that initial payment, to post the 250 bucks, recognizing just that month's share of the expense. And if we look at the journal entry it created here, it's pulled in the name, the location, the class, all automatically carried over. And in the memo, you've got a link back to the original entry that it created. And we are back to that first fateful entry. But what if, yeah, I see where your mind is going with great power comes great responsibility, right? But what if I put this in Carl's hands and fat fingers a date puts 3024 instead of 2024. And now I have a millennia of accruals I need to void. Good news, my friends. Check it out, I'm gonna change this to March 2024 and it'll update all the accruals and wipe out all the ones you no longer need. Now, what if, what if it's fixing things retroactively and there's a locked period? It'll post a catch-up adjustment the first day after the locked period. Smart, right? So whether it was Carl fat fingering an entry or not, sometimes these accruals are just gonna change, but you've still got a way to fix it. Now, expense stuff is cool, but what about deferred revenue? Deferred revenue schedule's ready. It, it does those too. Okay, here's an invoice. I'm selling a software license for 25 grand for the period 119.24 to 418.24. Just like with the expense, it's gonna recognize that revenue over the course of the entire period, even prorating the first and last month, according to the number of the days, the, the, the days in the month, you know what I mean? Easy as that, but wait, there is more. Fixed assets. No. So look at this, we're in a crew right now for the first time and we're drilling into my workflows for computers and equipment. So this workflow is going to impact purchases posted to the hot account, computers, and tablets. It's gonna use a default useful life of 24 months. Now anything that hits that account will be automatically depreciated over 24 months. So back in the QuickBooks file, here's a bank charge from Apple for 1200 bucks. Drop it into computers and tablets, Bob's your uncle. As soon as I hit save, it's gonna automatically book the depreciation for me. Plus, if I wanted to actually override that workflow setting, I could still specify the useful life in the description using that vernacular for the period start date to the end date. But wait, there is even more. Payroll accruals. Ugh. So I dropped a simplified payroll entry into here. In the description, I'm just gonna put for the period start date to end date. And it is going to use those dates along with the date of the journal entry to know which side of the balance sheet to book that on. It's doing the proration down to the number of days in each month. And it's maintaining the name, location, and class of those entries as well. How cool is that? So let's zoom out. Let's go back to the PL here. So here you'll see it's booked the deferred revenue, prorating the first and last month based on the number of days. It accrued the onboarding expenses for that new software, my payroll expenses for that work period that straddled two months, the software I bought, and the depreciation. Yes, Carl. Okay, but how do you really know that these schedules are correct? Don't you still need to check my schedules? Come, check this out. So I'm back in Accruer now. Accruer is rolling a full subledger here of all the accruals in process month over month. So for example, let's reconcile prepaid expenses, pop back over here to QuickBooks, make sure it ties out to the balance sheet. Looks good, and you can run that report if you really wanted a work paper. It'll show you all the detail. Carl, this conversation has been overdue 
And this is probably as good a time as any to have it. Buddy, I appreciate you. Oh my gosh, thank you. I value your contribution to the team. I needed to hear that. We good? We're good. Good. Mike. We're good. Yes, sir. Please see Carl out of the building. What? You, you said you appreciated me.